The fast-paced hero seems to be struggling on the road to victory and is still causing quite a lot of controversy over the quality of CGI and advertising strategies. These strategies are partly based on Warner Bros. However, if we look at this film from the heart's perspective, The Flash can be seen as a reversed film about the first month when the DCEU's plot lines were being developed. It is filled with countless interesting Easter eggs and details, from the cameos of famous actors who have accompanied the film's history, to the unintentional remarks of director Zack Snyder, to the numerous suggestions for future projects in the new cinematic universe. Let's take a deep dive into the film, which can be seen as a love letter to, to all the main fans of DC. This is a spoiler warning for those who haven't seen The Flash yet. Enjoy the film first, and then come back here. We are always waiting for you. This Easter egg video of the film will be extremely special. The opening scene of the film presents The Flash in a completely different manner compared to previous DC movies. Instead of featuring a variety of war characters as seen in the Unlimited series, the intro showcases the logos of Warner Bros. and DC, representing each milestone in their history. This serves as a symbol of the DCEU's centennial celebration and a new beginning for this cinematic universe, giving hope for a brighter future. Moreover, the introduction also hints at the possibility of cameo appearances by characters portrayed by different actors throughout DC's history. Next, we see Wayne's butler, played by Jeremy Irons, calling for Barry. The last time this character appeared in the DCEU was in the 2021 director's cut of Justice League by Zack Snyder. According to Nhi, since Ben Affleck is no longer playing the role of Bruce Wayne, does this mean that Alfred Pennyworth's character will also be recast? On the TV screen, Barry Allen and Alfred exchange information about Superman saving people from a volcanic disaster. This detail is reminiscent of the 1942 film Volcano, directed by Dave Fletcher. In this scene, Iron Man also battles the volcano to protect the locals. However, longtime fans of the DCEU, especially those who adore Henry Cavill's portrayal of Superman, may feel disappointed by this departure from the character's traditional storyline. Additionally, The Flash will mark the final time a male actor dons the iconic red suit of justice, as it was recently announced that the current actor will be leaving the role at the end of 2022. In the next scene, we see Barry running to Gotham City to help the Fallen defeat Falcone's son. Fans of the book will notice this detail, as it is a tribute to one of the greatest stories about the Fallen, Batman, The Long Halloween 1996. In this story, 13 terrifying knights in Gotham push the dark hero to confront the pain of a family from his past, who are a powerful force to be reckoned with. The name Falcone also suggests that this family exists in the DC universe. Similar to the two previous versions in Batman Begins and The Batman, it is highly possible that the villain Carmine Falcone will make a comeback in a standalone fallen film titled The Brave and the Bold. This project currently has limited information available, but it is known that it will draw inspiration from the relationship between the fallen and Robin, specifically Damian Wayne. The film will be directed by Andy Muschietti, who also directed The Flash. As the accused Falcony was about to land in the city, the audience once again witnessed the goddess of war lost in the journey of the Fallen and the Flash. Prior to this, the girl had also unintentionally become involved in the war between the Shazam family and was even asked out on a date by the boy, Billy Benson. With a total of seven DC movie projects in the works, many are wondering if the X-Men superstar is a suitable choice to reprise her familiar role in James Gunn's new movie universe. Let's try to guess below. Warner Bros. has always supported the decision to fire director Zack Snyder for the EC movie. However, in the movie that rebooted the entire DC universe, Warner's leadership may have actually appreciated and recognized the contributions of the director. There are two significant details in The Flash that clearly demonstrate this. First, Barry Allen and Iris West's first meeting is shown in the Justice League version directed by Zack Snyder. In the latest installment, Iris reveals that Barry saved her from an accident. This connection between the two movies suggests that The Flash is a sequel to the events in Snyder's Justice League. Secondly, when Barry shares his experience with time travel through the Speed Force with Bruce Wayne, the billionaire questions if this is something Barry has done before. These two details hint at The Flash being a continuation of the storyline in Snyder's Justice League, indirectly acknowledging the impact of the director's work. The Flash speaks to Bruce Wayne about the return of Ben Affleck in the black suit from the early days of the DCEU. With the reunion of The Flash and the actor, he has appeared the most frequently on the big screen as this character. 
However, in reality, he is also the only wealthy man who has not been given a standalone film. In this clip, we can see that Barry's house is located across from a hair salon owned by Grayson. This is a detail about Dick Grayson, Bruce Wayne's adopted son. In the comics, he is introduced as the oldest Robin in the Batman family. Later, he separates from his adoptive father to pursue his own heroism and is known as Nightwing. The appearance of Dick Grayson in The Flash is also connected to the previously mentioned project, The Brave and the Bold. It will be very interesting to see how Andy Muschietti, the director of the movie, introduces the entire Bat family into the film. When Barry Island looks inside the fridge of her own home, we can see a sweet drop of water dripping from the Big Belly Burger food store. In the comic, this company has become an indispensable fast food chain in the DC world since its introduction in Superman 441 in 1988. This detail is also directly linked to her upcoming movie, Blue Beetle, which will be released in August. Iron Heights Penitentiary is the second most well-known prison in the DC universe. Similar to Arkham Asylum, it houses some of The Flash's most dangerous adversaries. The second part of The Puppeteer, directed by Andy Muschietti, will delve deeper into the story of this hero. Will the audience get to witness more of his intriguing reenactments? If so, it will be a valuable opportunity to gain insight into the puppeteer's character as he faces a series of challenges through his reenactments. It should be noted that Barry Allen's sole enemy, Captain Boomerang, was featured in The Puppeteer and has since met his demise in The Suicide Squad. When Barry travels back in time, we get to see all the flashbacks of both Joss Whedon and Zack Snyder's versions of the Justice League. In this final appearance, the CGI face of Henry Cavill had a special moment in the scene of Superman's resurrection and facing the Justice League alone. In young Barry's bedroom, if you take a closer look, you will notice posters of films distributed by Warner Bros, such as Inception, Pacific Rim, and I Am Legend. Among them, I Am Legend is a film that predicted the confrontation between the Fallen and the Superman nine years ago which was brought to life on the big screen in 2016. This small detail is seen by fans as a gift from Warner Bros. to director Zack Snyder's film Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. Along with these, there are also posters of films directed by renowned filmmakers featuring The Fallen, such as Inception by Christopher Nolan, the mastermind behind the legendary Dark Knight trilogy, and Mars Attacks by Tim Burton starring the successful Fallen star, Michael Keaton, in 1989. According to Ashton Bale, he would never remove his black shirt without Nolan's permission. This caused him to miss out on being the guest of honor in The Flash. Unfortunately, Val Kilmer, who played the Fallen, was unable to join the film due to health complications from a chronic cancer. As a result, the role of Bruce Wayne, the oldest version of the villain, is now played by 71-year-old Michael Keaton. In addition, the release of the 1989 soundtrack by Danny Elfman was a special gift, making Tim Burton's return to the Night Watch a dream come true. Along with the Warner Bros. films on Barry's wall, we can also see the live-action adaptation of Scooby-Doo. This serves as a nod to the creator of Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy and also shows respect for DC's new master, James Gunn. With his talent for storytelling and ability to captivate audiences, the future of DC under his guidance looks extremely promising. Let's wait and see what James Gunn can do to elevate the DCEU in the next decade. As we continue to observe the posters in the apartment, we will notice at least one image of Egypt. In the story, the Flash once traveled back to ancient Egypt and encountered Black Adam, Dr. Fate, and Hawkman. These characters all appeared in The Rock's Black Adam movie in 2022. I wonder if the Fast and Furious villain is not given authorization to embark on a planned journey to confront Shazam, will the above story be able to be adapted into an animated version? It is highly likely and even Henry Cavill's Superman could potentially make an appearance in this explosive showdown, similar to Marvel's Civil War. In the film, we meet two characters named Patty and Albert. Patty is Barry's roommate and a blood expert for the criminal investigation department of the Central City Police. She is also Barry's colleague and lover. The character of Patty also appears in the CW show, The Flash. 
Albert Desmond, on the other hand, is a French scientist who later becomes the counterpart of Dr. Alchemy. The subtitles were provided by www.zearranger.co.uk. In the new era of 2013, Marty McFly of Back to the Future was played by Eric Stoltz, while instead of playing the role of Doc Brown, Michael J. Fox played the main role in Footloose. Additionally, it was revealed that Kevin Bacon was the male lead in Top Gun, not Tom Cruise. These coincidences have made Barry, in 2023, realize that he has disrupted the timeline of the universe. Furthermore, it is an intriguing coincidence that Tom Cruise, one of the first individuals to view the film, enjoyed The Flash to such an extent that he contacted director Andy Muschietti within 15 minutes to endorse the movie. The Joker bag that Barry picked up was a tribute to the 1989 film Batman by Tim Burton, which featured the iconic character, the Joker, portrayed by Jack Nicholson. After the film's release, the media went crazy and authorities discovered that the body of the Joker was still smiling as the bag was still wrapped around his stomach. In contrast to The Flash, when Barry was younger, he discovered the character of the mad hero and immediately became intrigued. This also suggested that this version of Barry would be transformed into Doc Flash, the direct counterpart of the speedy hero. It appears that, besides Marvel Studios, other films featuring the world of Samsung have a penchant for using food to illustrate the concept of the multiverse. In Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, for the first time, Peter P. Parker used fried potatoes to explain to Miles Morales the difference between two versions of himself from two different dimensions of space. The next film to use food as a symbol of the multiverse was Everything Everywhere All at Once, which won an Oscar. In this film, a cake was used to represent the multiverse. However, in the upcoming version of The Flash, a more powerful dish, Italian noodles, will be presented by Michael Keaton to discuss the Samsung universes. Keaton's explanation seems to be easier to understand compared to the way Marvel movies present the concept, don't you think? This is a crucial moment that highlights the relationship between three superheroes, Superman, The Fallen, and The Flash. They all played important roles during the Black Zero event in the main DCEU timeline. As Barry was sent to Metropolis to assist Superman, he quickly realized that the situation was too overwhelming for Superman alone. Meanwhile, Bruce Wayne was devising a plan for Clark Kent after the event. Speaking of Man of Steel, it's worth noting that The Flash also marked the 10th anniversary of Superman's debut in the DC Cinematic Universe. This further intertwines all the events related to Superman and the Fallen, especially since Barry was present during the events of Man of Steel. Speaking of Zod, Michael Shannon is the only actor from the Man of Steel cast to return to the set of The Flash. In an interview with Vanity Fair, Shannon expressed his discomfort with the invitation from Warner Bros. to reprise his role. He still feels remorse for the unfortunate events that transpired in the movie universe from Zack Snyder's perspective. Despite this, out of admiration and appreciation for the director, Shannon ultimately agreed to return as Zod after receiving blessings and encouragement from the father of Man of Steel. During the final battle with the Kryptonian, the 2013 version of Barry wore one of Michael Keaton's iconic headdresses. As he turned his head towards the older version of himself, Barry attempted to display a sense of unity, but his face appeared distorted. This was a deliberate nod to the fact that Michael Keaton, who famously portrayed Batman in the 1980s, was unable to turn his neck while wearing a headdress and had to physically turn his entire body to face a different direction. Additionally, in this scene, the Flash utilized a swift spin as he launched his attack, a signature move of the character during the Silver Age. The Flash is always faster than Krypton. This detail is highlighted in one of the most memorable moments of Justice League, when at the end of the credits, there was a race between Superman and The Flash. When Barry mentions this fact, it becomes clear who the winner of the race was. With the DCEU's re-establishment of its role, The Flash is undeniably affected by the Flashpoint event, another classic story that has also reset the DC Comics timeline. The first crucial event in The Flash's story is when Barry decides to travel back in time to prevent his mother's death a decision that leads to the loss of his loved ones. The second pivotal moment is when Barry loses his super speed and must turn to the Fallen for assistance in regaining his powers. In both the comic and the movie, he initially fails, but ultimately succeeds after his untimely death. It is worth noting that when Supergirl rescues Barry in the year 2023, 
she echoes the iconic line from the 1978 Superman film, in which Christopher Reeve's character saves Lois Lane. The third significant detail revolves around Flashpoint, where Supergirl is held captive by the Soviet government, prompting the Flash and the Fallen to join forces and rescue her. In the movie, the protagonist is still Superman, and he was captured by the US military as a child. The fourth detail is the name of Doc Flash, the evil version of Barry Allen's Flash from the future. In Flashpoint, Mew's enemy is responsible for the death of Barry's mother and becomes the main opponent of the Flash. This enemy is Eobard Thawne, also known as the Reverse Flash. In the final moment, Barry must travel back in time once again to fix his mistakes and allow his mother's death to occur in order to save the timeline of DC. While serving in the Space Force, Highbury witnessed the convergence of worlds in the DC universe, resulting in the reconstruction of a single universe. This event is directly linked to the 1985 Crisis on Infinite Earths, where the multiple Earths of the DC universe merged into one system. In order to prevent the collapse of reality, the Flash made the ultimate sacrifice. In the 2013 event, we see the Flash once again taking drastic measures by sacrificing himself to stop his evil counterpart and save the DC universe from destruction. This scene is considered one of the most expensive in the DC universe. Additionally, there are appearances by Superman, The Flash, and the Fallen versions from the past. First, let's discuss George Reeves' portrayal of Superman. As the second male actor to ever don the iconic red and blue suit, Reeves stood out even more than his predecessors when he first appeared in the 1951 film Superman and the Mole Men. This led to his success and the opportunity to star in his own TV show, Adventures of Superman, in 1952. However, as time went on, Reeves struggled to break out of the superhero image and it became typecasting. As a result, he grew disenchanted with the symbol of hope that he had become known for. Tragically, at the age of 45, Reeves passed away under mysterious circumstances, sparking endless controversy among fans. To this day, the cause of his death remains a mystery. Next, we see another version of The Flash racing through time. This is Jay Garrick, The Flash of the Golden Age of DC. Jay Garrick made his first appearance in Flash Comics on January 1st, 1940. As the first hero in DC Comics history, he now resides on Earth 2 alongside other Golden Age heroes. Additionally, this classic version of The Flash has also made an appearance on CW's TV show. In the upcoming episode, Christopher Reeve's Superman and Helen Slater's Supergirl will make an appearance together on screen. Throughout the four films, Christopher Reeve's portrayal of Superman has solidified his place in popular culture as one of the most iconic and inspirational characters. Additionally, Helen Slater's Supergirl will join forces with Reeve's Superman. Despite being a story about superhuman beings, this version of Supergirl has never had the opportunity to meet her sister, Glocken, in her own film. With these two brilliant cameos, Warner Bros. has successfully completed the development of two iconic characters from that era. After experiencing the two superhuman versions of the 80s, it becomes clear that there is also a human version of Adam West in another parallel universe. This cameo serves as a tribute to the classic 60s version of Batman. Unlike the typical dark and brooding portrayal of the caped crusader, the Bruce Wayne incarnation of Adam West brought a lighthearted and comical energy to the 1966 TV show. Thanks to this unique interpretation of the character, the traditionally dark and distant image of the Dark Knight became more relatable and accessible to audiences worldwide. Even today, the Adam West version of Batman continues to inspire and influence various artistic and commercial products around the globe. Moving on to Adam West, we come to the Superman version, known as the most unique and mysterious character in film history. Directed by Tim Burton, the film Superman Lives, starring the late Michael Keaton as the father, brings a superhuman image without the ability to fly and not based on traditional costumes. Instead, it features a suit with a mechanical mechanism combined with extraterrestrial biology. Additionally, the villain in this version of Superman is not your typical bad guy. He is a giant spider disguised as the evil Brainiac. With Tim Burton's ambitious and creative ideas, the film's budget was pushed to a whopping $300 million just for the prequel. As a result, Superman Lives became a highly anticipated and grandiose production like never before. However, the addition of a cameo appearance of The Flash in this version may have satisfied DC fans to some extent. In this dream. After Barry returned to his normal life to attend his father's trial, 
we witnessed the clever man lose a dear friend who looked like a hot dog bun on the side of the road. It was later revealed that this friend was actually the director of the film, Annie Muschietti. That's right. You didn't mishear it. The Flash has changed its ending three times. The first time was when Barry ran away from the court and encountered Michael Keaton's Batman, Sasha Kayer's Supergirl, and Leslie Grace's Batgirl. In this version, Michael Keaton will officially become the new Dark Knight of the DCEU. The second ending is also similar to the first, with one key difference. Instead of the Flash interacting with the characters mentioned above, this time he is shown standing in front of Henry Cavill's Superman and Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman. This confirms the possibility of a sequel for Man of Steel and Wonder Woman. However, these two endings were completely scrapped after Warner Bros. replaced the leaders of DC Studios five and seven times, resulting in conflicting visions and directions. Ultimately, they settled on two new names in the movie industry, James Gunn and Peter Saborin. The duo decided to go with the ending that was officially announced on set, which featured the Flash meeting George Clooney's version of The Fallen. This detail also set the stage for the upcoming film. The Brave and the Bold, directed by Andy Muschietti, in which Bruce Wayne teams up with his adopted children. In the opening scene of the film, the Flash heroically rushes in to rescue the children in the living room when the building starts to collapse. He also makes sure to save a dog that was in the room. In the movie, this canine hero is named Hank and is a member of the Doom Patrol, an ally of the League of Sunshiners. The Doom Patrol is known for being one of the most unconventional and unique superhero groups in the DC Comics universe. If director James Gunn can successfully bring this eccentric group to the big screen, there is a high chance that they will make appearances in future films. This is just a theory, but it seems plausible. Unlike in Flashpoint, where the Flash reveals everything to the people while running in the current timeline, the movie version shows Barry confiding in his only friend, Arthur Curry, about his experiences. This detail has been highly anticipated, as it will also be a highlight in the sequel to Atlantis, following the success of the first film. It can be said that the DC Cinematic Universe is now divided into two stages, before and after The Flash, which serves as a bridge between the old and new versions of DC under the direction of James Gunn. This first film about a hero is a tribute to all the audience and fans who have been with this cinematic universe since the beginning. So, do you think The Flash is an excellent superhero movie? Did we miss any interesting details in the trailer? Please leave your comments below. And now, goodbye. Thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again soon. May the Force be with you. I am going to make him an offer again. Play as time goes by. Hasta la vista, baby.